my job, which I should probably get to immediately, is that I wanted to spend a, a longer than normal amount of time uh, thinking with you about a very significant transition that's going to happen in the life of our church. And for many of you, this will be redundant because you've heard me say these things at members' meetings, but the fact that we have about 600 people on a Sunday and about 300 in our members' meetings made us think that it would be good just to go through these things with the whole body uh, gathered on Sunday morning. And, uh, and even if you've heard these things uh, many times, uh, really in such a big transition, I don't think over-communication is going to be a problem. And so I really want us to be clear. Uh, very often I get to do uh, wedding um, rehearsals with young couples who are just about to get married, or older couples sometimes are about to get married. And uh, when I do wedding rehearsals, I always say to the couple, you know, we're going to really rehearse what we're doing uh, tonight so that on the wedding we don't have to think about it. We can just enjoy the wedding day. And in a very similar way, we're going to really think carefully about how we're going to be transitioning as a church so that when that transition happens, we don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about the details. And of course, what I'm talking about is that we as a church are going to be transitioning to or transitioning back to one service, uh, meeting together in one service in a move we're calling uh, Forward as One. So starting June 6th, starting June 6th, which is just seven weeks away, we will be returning to one service. And that transition that we're calling Forward as One will be an attempt to continue building a community from all cultures where Christ is King. But we believe that by gathering as one service, we'll really have a greater opportunity to promote deeper relationships, to encourage broader Christian education, greater local church planting, and all through a sun shorter Sunday morning that leaves room for greater hospitality through the rest of the Lord's day. Now, what will that look like? Let me give you the breakdown right away. Let me get into the logistics uh, right away. Essentially, what this will mean is from 9 to 9.55, there'll be a Sunday school hour. 9 to 9.55, uh, Emmanuel kids will meet 0 through 5th grade. Uh, Emmanuel youth will meet 6th through 12th grade. Emmanuel adults will meet. We'll have both comprehensive adult education, dealing with everything from dating to doctrine. Uh, we'll have that during that hour, along with a continued emphasis on prayer. And then there'll be prayer rooms where our entire hour is focused in on prayer. Then there'll be what we'll call an efficient transition, 20 minutes uh, between that time and the regular Sunday morning gathering. That'll happen between 9.55 and 10.15. And then 10.15 to 11.45, it's an hour and a half, just like our service has been for many years, we will have a worship service with the whole family gathered together. You won't come in on a Sunday morning and say, where is everyone? Because they will all be there gathered in one service. And during that time, Emmanuel kids will still gather as a nursery. There will be a nursery offered from zero to four years old. So not a comprehensive kids uh, education plan like we have during that Sunday school hour, but a nursery for little kids age zero to four. Now, again, Forward is One is an opportunity to promote deeper relationships broader Christian education, greater local church planting, and a shorter Sunday morning that we hope will allow for greater hospitality. Let me spell that out a little bit for you um, more. So what do I mean by deeper relationships? Instead of having the opportunity to see and connect with just half of the saints in our Emmanuel family, we're going to see them all. Everyone who's gathered will be gathered with us every Sunday. Instead of the elders, just two or three elders seeing the whole church, myself, Ward, and whoever's preaching, really all of our elders would get to be among the flock that we love and want to be with every Sunday. So it's a full family reunion every week. And we think that that will provide a context for building the kind of relationships that build the body up in love to look more and more like Jesus. Now, one way we're going to seek, this is a little aside, big announcement, here's a little aside, one way we're seeking to promote deeper relationships is by moving to a new, easy-to-use member directory and giving platform called Breeze. Is there anyone here who's ever hated our, our current platform called CCB? Have you ever has struggled with that? There's some CCB haters. Josh, who used to be our communications director, hates CCB. I really shouldn't do this. They are a company. I'm sure there's some fine people involved. Anyway, they're, they're out the door. They're gone. And uh, we brought in something called Breeze. Now, Breeze will solve all of the 
problems in your life. It's amazing. No, Breeze really, though, is a much more intuitive and simplified design that really makes it much easier to uh, make real world connections with each other. So we don't want any unnecessary obstacles to setting up those potlucks or play dates, and Breeze will really be the platform on which all of that happens, and we thought now would be a good time to make that transition. Now, one thing you will notice is not on Breeze. You may get on Breeze, say, I wanna give, I wanna give to pay down the loan, and you'll get on there and look for a way to pay off the loan, but you won't find it, because on Friday, we paid off the loan. The loan is completely and totally paid off, amen. So the loan no longer exists, we are officially debt-free, and if you have any questions about how that happened a little quicker than expected, I'm sure Pastor Donnie would love to chat with you. So the first thing is deeper uh, Christian fellowship. The second thing is broader Christian education. We are very blessed to have really been able to hire a full team, Rebecca Cedillo leading our Emmanuel Kids, Cody Farthing leading Emmanuel Youth, and now Pastor Johnny Atkinson leading Emmanuel Adults, the adult education time and those prayer times. And really, we think that it's going to be an amazing opportunity to have that Sunday school layer here. We'll be equipping the whole body through Sunday morning services, but really getting the opportunity to give that age-graded education to people at every stage of life uh, through that adult education time. We know the church is built up by the Word of God, and this allows us to grow together in one worship service and through age-graded teaching and prayer for the whole family of God at Emmanuel. I'm, I'm very excited about this. There's wonderful things about Sunday morning preaching, and there's ways in which we can get into many of the issues that face us through our Christian lives through a broader Christian uh, adult education program. Uh, then we're also, we also think that moving to one service will facilitate greater church planting, greater church planting. And by the way, I should actually say this, greater local church planting. Uh, what if our efforts to train our kids and our youth and our adults result not only in spiritual growth, but numerical growth? What are we going to do then? What if the consequences for our efforts to build community is Jesus drawing more people to himself? Will we have to go right back to two services? No. We will plant local churches, and we will plant them locally from here. God's given us great success over the years in sending out missionaries. He's allowed us to plant many churches throughout the United States. And we think this presents an opportunity to actually plant more churches locally. We're not right up against our ceiling when we go to two services. There's still plenty of room to grow. But once that room grows, that would be about 400 people growing from about 600 to 1,000. We would try to spin off some of those folks into another local church plant. So we saw the church plant go to Shelbyville. We'd love to see another church plant in maybe roughly the next five years go out here locally in Louisville. Finally, it would also result in a shorter Sunday morning. Now, one of the things that I think has been not great pastoral leadership on my part over the years is we've often encouraged people to show more hospitality on Sunday morning, but the moms in the audience are like, yeah, but I'm going to die when I leave here, and so I will not be able to show more hospitality just yet. And so we wanted to shorten the Sunday morning to make some of that more feasible, either on Sunday afternoon or evening or any time really throughout the week. And so really, we've shortened Sunday morning to make that much more feasible for the body. Now, what will that look like? Let me, let me walk through a few next steps. First, let me give you a little bit of an official timeline. Uh, the official timeline will look like this. March 3rd, uh, we talked about this with our whole elder board. Now, when I say started talking to our elder board, actually, the first communication about this, you'll remember... Uh, happened to the congregation about a year ago, and we were actually discussing it about nine months prior to that. So we're talking about something that's really been in planning now for well over a year. But we communicated to the elder board uh, this timeline, March 3rd, and then uh, March 9th, we began to communicate with our staff. March 17th was the first time you heard about this moving forward. And then uh, April 18th, that's today, we're launching this seven-week series, uh, not a sermon series, but just a seven-week focus as we move towards moving forward as one. And then June 6th, we will be moving towards forward as one. What date will we be moving towards forward as one? June 6th. What else happened on June 6th? I think that's D-Day, isn't it? June 6th? Pretty amazing. Anyway, all you World War II buffs can get to me later. Uh, okay, so the, the next thing is, what about protocols? Or, or first, actually, what are the primary reasons we're doing this now? 
Now, uh, I didn't graduate from seminary, but I did go there once. And uh, I know there's no class on how to lead your church to a transition in the midst of a pandemic, not a class. So not sure if we're going to do this right, but, but we are trying to do our best. Why now? Why would we do it now when there's already so much transition going on around us? Well, a few reasons. One, our governor has recently increased church capacity from 50% to 60%. So that puts us in the range where we could actually gather in one service. Two, uh, the, the, the um, guidelines for churches are just that. They aren't at the level of law or mandate. They're at the level of recommendations. And so we have some wiggle room there. Again, another reason, there's been a steady decline of COVID cases. Kentucky had about 12 weeks of steady decline, a couple weeks of plateau. Hopefully, we're not on our way back up right now. But overall, the trend is going in the right direction for us to make this move. Then we now currently have the vaccine available to every Kentucky. Now, I know there's going to be different convictions in this room, but anyone who wants the vaccine will have been able to have it quickly and easily for months by the time we get to June 6th. So if you're a person going, I would never want to gather like that without getting the vaccine, you can get the vaccine. There is ample opportunity to get the vaccine. There are all kinds of appointments open right now for that vaccine to be available. In-person instruction has been uh, started back up for KY schools. Uh, when I got COVID last week, my kids would not go anywhere near me. They're like, we haven't been to school for a year and we are continuing to go to school. So you just stay in your room. And so uh, anyway, and then also the capacity and the distancing restrictions in Kentucky uh, may be lifted as early as the end of this month. Governor Bashir has announced that he thinks it's early as the end of May that we may see all social distancing and all masks removed. Now, he's also said if two and, a, two and a half million or Kentuckians are vaccinated by that time. So we'll watch that. We'll see how that develops. But all of those seem to be trends that would lead us to the place where we could gather as one service, as we've been planning to do for almost a year. Now, what protocols will be in place when we go to do that? Well, we're going to hold off on making that announcement until right uh, closer to June 6. It doesn't seem wise to make a concrete mask announcement or social distancing announcement now when things are changing daily and weekly. And so we'll wait till closer to that time to decide whether it's going to be everyone in here uh, without masks or everyone in here with, with masks. It will not be, just to be clear, there will not be a way to social distance the whole congregation once we're gathering in one service. That will be off the table, but masks would still be a possibility. We'll just wait and see where we are at at that time. Now, how can you serve? Let me kind of break this down really practically. How can you serve? You've all taken membership vows. You've all said you want to give your all to building a manual up. What are three ways that you can serve during this time? Let me give them to you. First, be committed. Be committed. Sadly, over the course of almost 20 years as pastor here at Emmanuel, I've noticed that transitional times in the life of a church become times when people transition to another church. That's not a reality I love. It's just a reality I know. It's a fact. And I want to encourage you not to do this. This is already a year of instability. I plead with you not to add to that instability with your transition, especially not now. Every month, we are literally seeing new long-term Louisvillians saved, baptized, and joining Emmanuel. Have we ever seen so many baptisms as we've seen over the last number of months? Our goal of seeing more Louisvillians saved and discipled is happening right now. And we need those we have poured into for years to be here, to be engaged, and to be ready to pour into those who are just coming to Christ. We believe one service with time for greater hospitality and adult education will provide a context for that. In the book of Philemon, the Apostle Paul calls Philemon to a costly act of forgiveness and grace, and he says, Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. He's basically saying, I've poured into you a lot. I want to get something out of you. I'm not going to lie to you. That's exactly my heart to you right now. I have poured into, the elders have poured into this congregation for many years. I want some benefit from you. That new generation of Louisvillians that we've been praying for for a long time that are being saved now, I want to see them poured into by those who have been poured into over so many months and years. 
So I plead with you to be committed. The second thing I want to encourage you towards is to be equipped, to be equipped. For some of our families, this transition will be a major change. It will mean having little ones with you in the service. There will be nursery for kids zero to four. We want you to do something hard, not something miraculous. Anyway, there will be nursery for children zero through four. But many families have never had their five-year-olds or their seven-year-olds or their nine-year-olds with them in the service. That will be a big change. They will annoy you. They, they will call for your attention. They will do things that you never thought they'd do in public. They will do things that you'd never even seen them do in private, right there for your enjoyment and your call to faithfulness. But why, so why should you make a Sunday morning, quote unquote, harder on yourself? Let me say this to you. The Bible gives us many solid ways of teaching. Among the most powerful is this. Example. Example. You want your kids to worship God? Let them see mom and dad panting after God on a Sunday morning. You want to see your kids hungering and worshiping God? Let them see mom and dad's tears as they worship God on Sunday morning. Your example is one of the greatest gifts you can ever give your children as you want them to worship God. Still, we want to do everything we can to equip you through the process of having those older kids with you. So one of the things is this book, Children and the Worship Service, by David and Sally Michaels, John Piper's long-term uh, children's ministers. David and Sally Michaels, we've had them here at Emmanuel, have produced this book, Children and the Worship Service. I think this would be a tremendous help for you. And it's available on the blue floor and the green floor today. So when you go pick your kids up out of IK, it's there for you. If you're not going to pick any kids up today, it's in the guest reception. If you can't find it there, come grab me. This book is for you. Now, you're gonna, this is a book that's got parenting advice, which means sometimes you're going to read this book and you go, I don't agree with that. So here's what you do when that happens. You turn the page. <laughs> you just turn the page. You don't need to cancel anybody. You don't need, you're okay. You're okay. You're a mature human being. You can handle someone having a different opinion than you. You're okay. But at the same time, you don't want to shut down older parents giving counsel. You don't want to shut down what they have found has worked. And if there's one idea, you're like, I don't agree with that one. Again, you just, here's what you do. You just turn it just like that. It's amazing how well it works. It's gone. It actually hides from you. And so you can, you can move on. But overall, I think you're going to find what's here very helpful to, and really by parents who've learned to faithfully raise up their kids in, in the pew. And so that is available to you. You've got 250 copies, more than enough copies, one for every family at Emmanuel. And if you're hoping to have kids in the future, feel free to grab one too. We would love to give you that resource. Also, over the next number of Sundays, we're going to have families who've been training their kids for years come and share with you on Sunday morning. They'll share with you some of the glories and some of the gories of their experience, you know, doing that because there's always great moments and there's always not so great moments in that whole process. And we just want to make that an embraced reality for the whole church, something that we value. We're so glad. I heard this week about a family that when one of the parents, when the extended family was together, when one of the parents would take the little kid out for a discipline time, the mother-in-law would just say, bless you. Bless you, bless you. And that's what we want to be as a congregation. When some family has to take a kid out of here for a little special time, we just want to say, that's faithfulness. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You're on the right track. Third, be committed, be equipped, be a volunteer. Be a volunteer. As we transition to one service, you know how many new volunteer needs we have? One, just one. There's not a bunch of new stuff happening. One. One new volunteer need. We really have one new volunteer need. It's this. We need nursery workers to care for our children, zero through four, in the nursery. This is not like other opportunities. Emmanuel Youth, they sign up for a year. Emmanuel Kids are often making multi-month commitments. Emmanuel Adults planning to do a six-week class. This is different. 
This is really an all-hands-on-deck ministry. This is the whole church volunteering and saying, listen, if we all volunteer, then maybe we only have to do it like once every eight weeks or once every six weeks. This is something that you can do no matter what other ministry you're involved in, except maybe worship. This simple volunteering to be part of the rotation just during the worship service really blesses the whole church. The more volunteers we have, the less of us need to miss the service. Again, this is something everyone can volunteer for. I know of one sister who volunteers every week in the Sunday school hour, who's going to be nonetheless volunteering once every four to six weeks in the nursery. I know of an elder who, in addition to his weekly responsibilities in the Sunday school hour, will be volunteering every four to six weeks in the nursery. And I believe that if we have an all-hands-on-deck attitude towards this ministry, it's possible that people may only be volunteering every six to eight weeks. The more volunteers, the less anyone misses a service. Now, you're going to get a text today asking you to sign up. We would love to have you sign up. Now, if you see, I'm already involved with IK, just sign up anyway and express, I'm willing to do this. If you haven't done anything with IK, sign up anyway. This is the kind of thing that would help us let you know what the needs are for this particular ministry. Well, that's the plan. I, I hope it's an exciting one for you. I am really looking forward to this. The only problem with one service is with two services, if you blow the sermon the first time, there's always hope. But with one service, you have to wait a whole other week to have hope again. But I am really looking forward to having all of God's people singing. We have this weird dynamic right now. We're in the first service. It's hard to hear people because everyone's got a mask on. In the second service, it's hard to hear people because there's so few of us. I can't wait to bring everyone together to worship the Lord. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, ask any elders. There's an FAQ on the website. We really hope that you'll have all of your questions answered before. Now, here's my hope. It's the hope I would have if I was preaching this Sunday. My hope is that you'll take all that, file it away, forget it for a while, and give Pastor Evan all of your attention to hear God's word from Isaiah chapter 12.